Ça va à Koyaiki, au Chili, au centre de la Patagonie. C'est comme un, un voyage que tu as la chance de faire une fois dans une vie, mais que moi j'ai la chance de refaire pour une deuxième année, là un an, jour pour jour ou presque. On était là-bas, puis euh, on peut pas s'empêcher d'y retourner. On prend l'avion à soir, Toronto, Toronto, Santiago, on dort à Santiago. Le lendemain matin, on prend un premier vol, puis on s'en va à Balmaceda. We get our second connecting flight of the trip, phase 3.2, on our way to Santiago, Chile. On est arrivé à Santiago. On est à l'hôtel juste à côté de l'aéroport. On a un petit layover jusqu'à demain matin. On va en profiter un petit peu pour se reposer. Puis aller explorer peut-être. En tout cas, il fait chaud. Très chaud. I never thought in a million years that I'd be here with two of my good buddies on our way for a pretty much fishing trip of a lifetime. Um, funny how things happen and one thing to the next, you follow your passion and you know, you could be in a beautiful place like this. I mean, we just spent the day hanging out, going to Santiago for the day, no really rhyme or reason. Just wanted to go grab a beer, grab some tacos, see the locals and we had an amazing time. Uh, got to see some scenery, got to, you know, had some challenges with language, trying to get some money out, trying to talk to the cabbie, getting directions. We actually got to take the bus, the subway, and metro, and took a cab, and just kind of blowing my mind, this whole thing. Ça va manger? Bacaneros. Yeah, boys. Yeah, yeah boys. <laughs> Patagonia. Yeah. Yep. Here, even just seeing the scenery, you can hardly believe that it's actually true and places like this actually exist in the world because it's, it's actually mind-blowing. Coming from Canada and, you know, our, what we're used to to coming and seeing this is phenomenal. I mean, fishing is fishing. Obviously, I've got really high expectations um, of catching <laughs> the biggest brown trout in the world I can even imagine, but if I can walk away from here having a great time with two of my good buddies and, you know, fishing, enjoying, and enjoying the outdoors, having some brews, having some good food, that's, uh, I can't ask for any more than even just that basic experience, so I'm stoked, generally. After four days of traveling, finally made it. We're here in Balmaceda, Chile. Uh, I'm gonna take a half hour drive here, get to the lodge, and uh, hopefully get some fishing going this afternoon. Pretty stoked on being here my first time, so I'm gonna take in this whole drive and see what it has to offer. Okay, on regarde the, the paysage qui est fou. Ça a pas de bon sens, des arcs-en-ciel, y a du soleil, tu vois qui tombe des petites gouttes depuis ailleurs. Quand nous sommes arrivés en Patagonie cette année, nous avions une mission claire. Nous voulions parcourir ce vaste territoire à la recherche des plus grosses truites qui habitaient ces cours d'eau. Nous allions tout faire pour réussir à finalement capturer la plus grosse truite de nos vies. Quand on est arrivé au St. Corio's Lodge, on était vraiment énervé, on était vraiment content d'être arrivé. On voulait vraiment aller à la pêche. On a préparé notre matériel, on a checké nos moulinets, checké nos soies, on a monté nos cannes. On est descendu sur le bord de la rivière, juste en arrière du lodge pour finir la journée et se préparer pour le lendemain. On a commencé notre aventure dans un petit Spring Creek, dans Valley of the Moon. On voulait pêcher avec des sauterelles, puis on recherchait des grosses truites à la surface. On est arrivé au spot. Il vente euh, terriblement. Puis euh, on va commencer à pêcher. 
Je suis en train de mettre un petit hopper parce qu'ici c'est le paradis des sauterelles, donc on va essayer avec ça. Ça a l'air que ça peut être bon. When you first come here, uh, you don't. It's weird because you see you. You're on the internet. You're googling Chile, Patagonia, and you're just kind of searching for what to expect. And sure, you find images and all the typical top 10, this and that. But until you actually come here, it, there's no words that can describe what it actually looks like and what you're actually going to experience. C'est une super belle journée. On a appris beaucoup sur la truite. On en a pris beaucoup à la mousse sèche. Ce qui était le fun, c'est que c'était un petit Spring Creek. Ça a permis de voir l'action live. On les voyait où qui restait puis de où qui sortait pour aller manger nos sauterelles. Ça nous a vraiment aidé à se préparer pour continuer notre aventure. Driving home after a good day of fishing, and we spotted an armadillo. So we decided to try to corner it and chase it. And anyways, he shot off that way, he got through under a fence and got away, but pretty cool experience. My first time seeing an armadillo flesh, so pretty interesting creatures anyway. Good thing we didn't get bitten. <laughs> Après une super journée dans Valley of the Moon, nous nous dirigions vers Estancia del Zorro, un Spring Creek légendaire où nous savions qu'il habitait des truites de plus de 5 livres. We're fishing the Estancia del Zorro Spring Creek today, and uh, we need uh, need some ammo. So me and Rodrigo are making some flies here. Rodrigo is actually uh, showing me some uh, some ancient Chilean secrets when tying these flies. In return, I'm going to teach him how to speak Canadian. So. Uh, See, hopefully these things can attract some big boys today. This type of beetles, we have many dung beetles. Then we have many different type of small beetles. And we also have spiders that they are the same size. So what we're trying to imitate here is a, a beetle that looks like a spider or a spider that looks like a beetle. <laughs> Oh, in a day, man, in a no key, guess what? Dude, in a two, two, oh my shit, dude, really, man, there's two. Let it eat it, let it eat it, man. See, look, I caught this fish with my fly 
right here, which I'm gonna release right now. Wow, okay. I got this fish on the fly. It's still alive. Look. He said it's going, and look at this one. He came to eat the trout that I had on my line. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Man! Uh, 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 oh. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> passé une super belle journée. Après avoir vu une truite dévorer un autre truite, on s'est rendu compte de la voracité de ce poisson-là. On était motivé pour continuer notre aventure, encore une fois à la quête de grosses truites. In this area, this kind of forest, it's what you call beech trees. And here, of that family, we got, at least in this area, we got four trees. You know, we got three kind of coiwes, lenga, some nires, and they're pretty rich in beetles. Okay. Yeah, but the good thing is that the beetles, they live there, but they, they don't necessarily kill the, the tree. So every year you see the same trees, and one uh, every, every four years, something like that, they hatch. Right now, they're out. We don't see them flying because it's not the right temperature right now, but maybe during the day we might see them, but they're there. Even if we don't see anything, you might throw those big flies and they will know. They know that that's food and it's big food. Yeah. Hey, we're uh, just getting geared up. Today we're gonna float the Paloma River. Uh, we're here with Lalo again today, and it sounds like we're gonna be drifting up and down, kind of maybe hitting the lake as well. Um, today, I guess there's a combination, a good possibility of getting them on on big dry beetles again. So I'm hoping that's the case, because that's a lot of fun. Uh, we just passed this huge canyon, and looking down, we could see some big monsters, 28 inches, about. Paulo says right here on the bank is good, so we're gonna give it a shot, then go get to the boat and hopefully get some monsters today. That's the plan anyway. <laughs> said you know I know there's some big ones we're creeping up here or he said walk slow get down he said get down on your knees cast like you know, right up against the bank I can't see it but I know one's there so I have to crawl on my Woo! knees and I'm kind of casting at an angle on the tree and I get this big beetle like two inches from the shore and just it just pops it and oh set the hook man best feeling ever Lalo. yeah Lalo. good job yes. again Okay, we're already here at Elizalde Lake. We jet down Paloma, then jet up uh, the Sour River, and here we are, Elizalde Lake. So we just got to this area, but look at the day, you know. This is perfect, some ripple in the water. It's not windy. We can see already fish cruising there, so it's gonna happen within a couple of minutes, I would say. We might be able to catch our first fish. See? Oh. Told ya! <laughs> oh. oh man! <laughs> oh. AM in the morning, see? Incredible! <laughs> no! <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, no, no, no. 
even if we don't see them, you throw that, you just wait. Most of the time we wait between seven to 10 seconds. But if you see a fish coming, approaching, just wait, just wait, wait. And that thing is gonna come like very slowly to, to eat that. On s'est fait proposer par euh, l'équipe aux Cinco Rios d'aller faire euh, une aventure. On a comme trois heures de route à faire, deux heures de bateau, plus un autre deux heures de route, je pense. Ça va faire euh, des lake runs de euh, truites brunes. Ça a l'air que c'est des grosses, grosses truites. We had a pretty rough morning. Yesterday was a long day traveling, and this morning the water was dirty, couldn't get into anything, and we were starting to get down and stuff like that. We had lunch, we were kind of taking a nap. And Cry I a little bit. Cried a little bit, but then, then something happened to me anyway. Something, we were walking along the trail, kind of checking around, and I found something that, you know, maybe Jeff didn't believe me, but. Uh, a lucky horseshoe. <laughs> <laughs> and what do you know, after I got the horseshoe, turned my pocket, walked back to the truck, walked down. Rodrigo says, oh, we're going to try down here, the water's clearing up. And what do you know, I step right above Jeff, and boom, I get the... Went in front of me? <laughs> yep, yeah, stepped right in front of Jeff, and got pretty much the, probably the biggest brown of, our, of my trip anyway, so far. So I'm sure tomorrow will bring many, many more, but for now, uh, I don't know, maybe I might sell this thing to Jeff if he uh, <laughs> for the offers right, so we'll see. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> trip back from Paradise River back to Koeiki and uh, on the way I guess there's these uh, marble caves randomly beside this small dirt road so we came down we had like no cash on us so we traded a bottle of wine for this guy to sh shuttle us over to these caves and we go take a look Après une aventure extraordinaire de trois jours dans des terrains connus de la Patagonie, nous avions finalement réussi à capturer des grosses truites. Par contre, nous cherchions encore plus. C'est pour ça que Sébastien nous a parlé d'une expédition extraordinaire pour se rendre jusqu'au lac Quetro, un lac dans le haut d'une montagne qui avait presque jamais été pêché, où il nous promettait qu'il y avait des truites de plus de 10 livres. Mate, 
Patagonian. Well, we're getting in some action, we're getting some big monster trouts, but they're breaking all our shit. <laughs> so uh, we're upgrading the hardware, so to speak. Uh, Jeff just lost another one, blew up his leader. Fred lost two, blew up his leader. I just had a friggin' the biggest trout I've ever seen follow my fly and uh, upgrading everything and see how it goes. Hopefully we can make something happen here last minute. journée on s'est fait euh, on s'est fait euh, avoir pas mal on s'est fait briser des sur des takes moi je n'ai pogné une petite que j'ai échappé rendu au bateau mais assez bizarre assez bizarre tu vois les grosses grosses truites des, oh, des truites de au moins 24 peut-être 30 pouces peut-être un petit peu plus ils suivent ils suivent ils suivent ils revirent de bord au moins là, là 15 minutes là je tripais bien tranquillement puis ça va être tout éclaté 15 vitesses on part parti avec tout Maintenant, on était satisfait, on avait trouvé les truites, on les avait vues, ils avaient cassé nos lignes. La prochaine chose qu'il nous restait à faire, c'était de les capturer. C'est pour ça qu'on est revenu au lac Quetro. On a grossi notre leader, puis on était vraiment, vraiment prêt à finalement sortir un de ces monstres de ce lac-là. <rire> J'ai la truite, man! <rire> la revanche! Yeah! <rire> Regardez ce que j'ai pris! <rire> J'ai pas de mots pour décrire ce que, ce que je viens de vivre. C'est incroyable, je sais pas si vous avez vu la grosseur de la truite là. C'est malade, Fred, ça fait comme 3, 4 minutes, 5 minutes qu'il en a perdu une. Puis là, on changeait de spot, puis ça a cogné.
incroyable. Je sais pas quoi dire. Tu es en Patagonie. Tu viens en Patagonie pogner des truites brunes. Tu espères de pogner une truite de 20, 24 pouces. Peut-être 3, 4 livres. Là, on est ici dans le milieu de nulle part. Puis viens de pogner une truite de 8, 9. Je sais pas comment ça peut peser. <rire> C'est fou. <laughs> We're going uh, what river today? Mani Wallace. Mani Wallace. With Manding. With Manding. This morning we took a long drive up here on the Midiwau and uh, came in search of, we weren't sure if we were going to hit into it, but we just got uh, a huge run of king salmon. So kind of not what we were expecting, uh, but he said there's three runs a year. Looks like we just hit one. So uh, these things, I guess, can get huge. And uh, all we got is six weights. So let's see if we can make it happen. Ooh, yeah. Vaya pesadilla corriendo con una bestia detrás. Dime que es mentira. Oh my God. This is the biggest fucking fish I've ever seen. Shit. I've got the biggest fish I've ever hooked on a fly rod right now. Oh yeah, yo. We decided to try to swing flies with six weights for these monsters. Not so much of a good idea. I've had him off for about 20 minutes now. And he's no signs of letting up, so the only logical thing to do is to have a beard. Ooh. Oh my god! I just got the biggest fucking salmon I've ever seen in hell! Look at this thing! <laughs> Oh, swinging flies on a six weight. <laughs> 45 minutes. Finally got him in. Woo! <laughs> Welcome to Patagonia, my friend. Thank you. Yeah. One for you, too. <laughs> Gracias. It works like that, but later. Oh, okay. <laughs> À ce stade-ci de l'aventure, nous pouvions considérer que notre mission était accomplie. Nous avions finalement réussi à capturer les grosses truites que nous recherchions. Par contre, il nous restait une mission qu'on voulait vraiment, vraiment faire. On avait aperçu une truite énorme du haut d'un pont. Les guides nous avaient dit que c'était impossible d'accès, impossible d'y accéder. On leur a redemandé, on voulait vraiment finir notre voyage avec ça. On a décidé de se lancer dans l'aventure pour aller capturer cette énorme truite-là.
là, c'est comme vraiment spécial ce qui se passe. On sait qu'il y a des très grosses truites là-bas dans un canyon. L'accès est très, très, très difficile. Mais il y a des poissons euh, 25, 26, peut-être 30 pouces. On devrait s'accrocher parce que c'est une place qui est jamais, jamais, jamais pêchée. Dale, Noah! Dale! OK, so we're going to try to see if we can jet up, up the upper Paloma and reach this area here and try to see if we can access these fish. Uh, it's going to be hard. It's going to be hard not to spook them, but... I'm gonna try to get stealth mode on and uh, see if we can get into one of these big boys. See if we can make it. We have a chum Dylan who is on the pond to try to get another prise of view. Les branches d'arbres plus haut, là, là. Ça fait qu'il est-tu encore dans la pocket? Comme euh, 25 pieds en haut. 5 pieds en haut de la rivière, up river? 25. Mais depuis tantôt, ils font ça, là, ils montent, puis en descendant, puis ils montent. OK, OK. So you're saying they're, they're now they're like 20 feet up, but they said they keep coming up and down. Pretty much about to get on a plane here in about an hour. It's uh, kind of bittersweet, I guess, to end to an amazing trip. Uh, we had a great time. I can't even believe I've been here for almost three weeks. It's such a beautiful place. Uh, amazing fishing. Me, Fred, and Jeff had an amazing time. I think it made it even better just to be here with some friends, and uh, we had freaking a bunch of laughs. We caught some fish, but. More importantly, we just had fun fishing, and for me, that's what it's all about. It's uh, fishing is kind of, or sorry, catching fish is uh, a secondary notion to what the actual point is, and it's awesome to just be able to hang out, not think about anything else. You don't think about stress, bills, anything. You just think about you, the river, and your your fly rod, and it's a uh, it's an amazing, amazing thing to actually be able to do for, especially for about 16 days for me and Jeff, anyway. Um, and I mean, staying here at Cinco Rios has been amazing. 
uh, everyone here from the staff to the guides and uh, Sebastian. Uh, definitely have to give big shout outs to uh, uh, our guides, mainly uh, Rodrigo, aka Mendinguez, uh, and Lalo, and also Roberto and Ivan. Um, we had an amazing time with them. It's funny how you spend so much time with a guide and you actually become friends and not so much just a client. So we had a great time. Uh, we, we all pretty much got into some amazingly big fish, which is always a bonus. 